Hey, everyone, welcome back to another exciting episode of Attack Productions. Today, I'm back up joined once again by Adam. Just the two of us. <laughs> and today's matchup, it's me versus Adam. Um, I've brought out the villainous deck. Adam has brought us Blue Majin Buu. And before we get into anything else, like always, there's buttons down below. There's links in the description. Feel free to click them, check them out. And let's get into today's match. So this was our third round of the evening, but I was already on camera once. And... I wanted to showcase Adam's Blue Maj Boot deck. It's a deck we haven't seen in a while. But you were my opponent. And, I, and everyone else who um, I wanted to showcase had already been on camera. I'm like, okay, um, I can just change decks or I can play the same deck again. And I decided to change decks to go with Villainous. Man, is this yeah. an interesting match. <laughs> Yeah, it sure is. Uh, because uh, my my deck likes to get Majin Buu cards in the drop area, and sometimes having to get rid of them from my hand is okay. Yeah, and not just that, but also like you have cards that can actually quote unquote eat my cards, so that way they mm -hmm. don't stay on the board as long as I would like them to stay on. Yeah, and I've I've been going through a lot of the older decks um, since the anniversary box came out. They they came out with a nice little pack of uh, you know uh, older leader support or archetype support. So I've been trying to go back and you know um, kind of utilize some of those cards um, and kind of see how they make the older deck strong. Yeah, and that's something I want to do. I got I got plans for other leaders I want to bring out as well. I haven't really discussed too much about so. You start off with the uh, the one drop from I think it's Battle Evolutions, mm -hmm. which uh, it gives you a quick way to, to go into. Is it the seven drop or is it the five? Seven drop. drop. Okay. Yeah, it's the seven drop, but it also draws me a card, which is a you know you can't you can't be mad at a, a, a play one pay one draw one for yeah. a first turn, which kind of begins the idea of counteracting my deck. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't notice throughout the the night really drawing a whole lot, um, but you know, hand destruction is always intimidating, regardless of yeah. what your game plan is. And not for you, it's not really just the idea of drawing; it's more or less uh, switching out cards a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the hit to um, SS uh, Trunks God Sealing technique, it really kind of opened up my uh, confidence in being able to bring this deck back. Yeah. So here, I uh, assume the leader, I find me a uh, the four drop robot, which is great to play. Um, you can play for one energy if one of your villainous cards is removed by a skill. And here I'm kind of debating about order of operations, about awakening. And since this is a draw two, I go ahead and do that now. Um, in hindsight, I feel like I should have waited an extra turn to awaken. I was just so used to every other game I've played with this deck so far where I've always awakened on turn two. Because I was like, oh, you want to awaken as soon as possible? Because you start uh, taking advantage of the leader's ability. The problem, as you can see just now, I didn't play any battle cards on turn two. And the reason for that is because I uh, didn't have any two drops I wanted to play. I had the super combos in my hand, so I could have played the super combo. But then if you would have just killed it, I'm out of a super combo now. Yeah, absolutely. And that's always one of the risks of playing that uh, that Zeno super combo. Sometimes people play, you know, they play it for one, uh, and then they try to super combo it later because it gets, you know, you get a draw off the play. Um, but yeah, sometimes those super combos are better just holding your hand. Yeah. So some people play um, uh, the hit unison uh, in the the blue boo deck. Um, I prefer to play the Cell Frieza because it allows me to uh, free play a, a one drop. I do also run um, Awakening, I think it's Awakening Power Pan or something like that, yeah. uh, which is a one cost that returns to my hand at the end of my turn. So I, you know, I proc the draw one off of that unit in every single turn if I can. So, so here I'm able to negate your first sack of Frieza, kind of getting the villain effect off the one drop. And as a reminder, I always put markers on the one drops when their skills are proc as a reminder that they can't be used anymore. So I end up, I have a blue energy and I have to charge a sensor beam. I don't want to, but I have to. I think at this point, I've now drawn three super combos <laughs> and two of the blue robot guys. Yeah. And this is why I start thinking, like, I think it was during my turn three, I'm like, man, I really should have held off at least one more round. So here I'm going to try to get a little bit fancy. Trying to figure out my order of operations. 
um, combo off the one drop to put it into my Z energy. And this way I could go ahead and play Gamma because Gamma removes its specified uh, cost if you are uh, if you have a Villainous on board, I think, or if your leader is Villainous, it's one or the other. So I go ahead and establish Gamma um, and I use Gamma's ability to pop the Frieza, if correct, which will then allow me to um, play one of my robots because the robots is for one energy if one of your villainous cards is removed by a skill, you can pay one energy to play that card. And does it, it have to be a, it, a specific a specified color on that no, uh, one card? It, it, okay. It's it's cool. either a red, I think a red ribbon army card or a villainous card, and it has to be during your turn. So it works for both the set. I think it was eighteen, not eighteen. Sorry, uh, set seventeen. I think. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, General, whoa, what's his name? I can't remember. All of a sudden, the Rildo. No. Real oh, the... Oh, DT. yeah, yeah. Pretty much the Red Ribbon Army yeah. deck. I can't remember the, the general's right. name. It's not Blue. Blue is mm -hmm. his lieutenant. Mm -hmm. So here... Yeah, there was Commander you know, Red. Yeah, Commander Red. Um, So now it has double strike. It's 20k. And I swing into your unison because you're you're already at a place where you, you can awaken whenever you want. I don't think... You, yeah, you haven't done it yet. So I want it to apply pressure there. And, no, I guess sorry. I took it to your life. I guess I thought I, t I thought I swung into your uh, units on that one, but then I pop it to get the secondary effect. Where if you activate a counter, then I get to uh, draw a card. But you didn't, which is smart. I mean, I also swung your units, and they let me know if your units was important enough to keep alive, or was me getting a draw. You know, like it gave me information like what you're okay with, and you're okay for losing a marker. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and at this point in time, you know, I, I have the cards that I need to be able to get both the four drop out as well as the uh, seven. I think the the um, seven drop can only come out if you have three or more energy or your opponent has three or more energy. So um, I'm good to go here. Um, I do want to try to make sure that I've got seven cards in my drop because the uh, Awakened side leader um, gives gets a plus 5k uh, if you've got uh, Sparking seven, which is nice. So here you're, yep. you're you're establishing it. I'm trying to double check its effects because this is where autos get tricky. My dog in the background yep. are playing. Please excuse them. <laughs> I was like, you got a motorcycle in your living room? What's yeah. happening right now? <laughs> so you, you do the swing. Unfortunately, the only negate I have, I would prefer it to be petrification, is... I forgot what that one's called. Uh, no, not protect people. I can't remember what it's called, but it allows me to play the one, um, the one black to the board, which then procs the villainous auto. So you know you took the card. The auto was already put into pending before mm -hmm. um, it was removed. And this will catch this mistake. This is where I found out that oh yeah, it's during my turn only. But so you had this card to card, which for this deck it's not a bad idea because you have cards that will take uh, go tents. Or go tanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. The one on the far right, that one pulls a uh, go tanks from uh, the deck into the drop zone. And then the, the little guys, uh, those one cost will pull a uh, Gohan adolescence. So, yep. And now for just one energy, I send that card to the warp and I get to pull out the um, uh, four cost that gets to make tokens. Uh, which has barrier, so it, it sticks on the board pretty nice. I kind of want to point out real quick, I'm hoping to draw into a certain card this entire time, too. This is why I was kind of hoping that maybe I should have held off on Awakening on turn 3, because I didn't play any cards also on turn 3 with my leader's ability. So I'm kind of in a, a tight spot right now when it comes to the resources in my, I have in my hand, and it really just breaks down, can I draw into the card I want? So I'm taking the life um, so I can start doing super combos, and I can start using super combos to draw more cards. Fun fact, I think I drew my fourth super combo off that life, actually. Does on your unawakened side, it allows you to look at the top cards or search, or yeah. what's the advantage of sticking around on the unawakened side? So when you're unawakened, you can't pay one energy to play the cards. But you get to search top five cards of your deck, kind of similar to the AOD leader. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gives you a lot of searches. But once you awaken, it's only a draw. But you can pay one energy once you awaken to play any villainous cards with a uh, energy cost equal to or less than your current energy. Yeah, that can be really strong late game because you've got you've got quite a, a few really good villainous cards that are four cost. Um, yeah, I played the Broly, which is a yeah. board clear. The red drop yeah. Broly will clear your board. It won't get past the barrier, but it nags up on your on your opponent's board. I think by twenty five. Yeah, and I was really just hoping and it's a triple strike. Like if I play from him, it's a it's a triple strike, twenty or twenty five k that negs your opponent's board by twenty five. Yeah, and just you know, in, in retrospect, um, Majin Buu never has a board that looks like this. <laughs> I mean, the the kind of a lot of the nerfs to the counterplay cards uh, has really kind of allowed me to um, to brush this one back off and uh, and and play it again. Which it's it's one of my favorite decks. Um, I like all those fun little kitschy decks that have um, archetypes that. Uh, maybe take a little bit more practice to get used to. Makes the reward better. So here, um, I, I was kind of unfortunately have uh, had to charge another Janimba, but now I have a card I can play the Legion's ability. It is a three drop, it's not the four drop, and it, it's not the three drop I would prefer. I would prefer Beerus. I think I think it's Beerus because it will. It has a um, offering, and if you choose not to crit a life, then I get to draw two cards. But Cooler is not a bad option. Cooler has the ability to neck out a card. Uh, by 25, so I was able to snipe your 7 drop. Mm-hmm. And that was he, a good move. And he is dual attack, and I had no other cards to really swing with. Maybe I could have swung with the token to bait out your um, um, blocker, but I really needed um, these cards to go into my... Um, oh, I guess I do end swing with it. Okay. <laughs> but you... you play a card I haven't seen in a very long time and it pretty much takes yeah. care of it. Yep. Just call me the guy who plays old cards. Cause <laughs> I, I like, you know, the, the brewing part of, of this game is really my, my favorite. I love playing. I love winning, but just getting a chance to go back into old cards and say, how can I make these things work is, is a lot of fun for me. So here I'm trying to figure out like, do I want to try to play another Gamma approach? Do I want to do something else? And ultimately, I do attempt to play Gamma again. And I don't proc the auto. I don't want to pop Cooler, because I want to keep Cooler for my turn. i oh, sorry, for your turn, when I uh, negate again to play the one drop. Mm-hmm. To get some more cards out of my hand? Yep. And here, I kind of just apply a little bit of pressure by using the super combo. Um... You took super combo out of the way, but mainly I'm just trying to get more resources into my hand. And the reason why I didn't proc the activate main there, you don't play villainous cards. So my thought process is that maybe the game will be a target for you to swing at. And that way, if you waste your, your attack on that, I'm okay with that. And if not, then I have a way to activate main beginning my next turn. That forces you, if you activate a counter, I can draw a card. Yeah, it's a solid, solid game plan. But I mean, at this point in time, you know, you've got you've got three life left. I'm 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 gonna try to take care of that if I can. Yeah. And you just established another one. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and you're like, it's the same one. Like, oh yeah, I forgot they had. That. Oh yeah, it just has no neck. <laughs> no, these ones. All right, so this is just my opinion. Set yep. six had some amazing SPRs. I love that yeah. gold background. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I wish they would do more like that. Yeah, it, it really was. And and I liked uh, set seven as well, where they had kind of the, um, it was almost like a mural on the cards. It was yeah. really pretty. So here, you swing, I negate, just get rid of a card. You're going to eat my cooler anyways. Wait, sorry, you swung a bleeder this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep, and I think, yep, there I go with three. Pull that down, comes out. I put a Gohan from my drop underneath. Yeah. Yep. And that's the one I took care of earlier. That's one that has the auto deck eat a card. Yep, um, yep. I don't remember if it had double strike or not, but it... Uh, that one's got, I think it has uh, 
Uh, I think it might even have triple strike. Yeah, I, I just remember I, I was in a situation where if I can't negate, this would be rough, and I couldn't. So you go ahead and eat the cooler. You get to restand, which is great for you. You only super combo once, and um, I think I super combo twice. Yeah, I, I, can't, I get out of this attack, so I'm not taking the damage. Which, which I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, it's I get another attack anyway, so I didn't want to go too deep into this one. Um, and even if you don't have anything for me to to eat, I still get to restand, which is nice a part of that auto. Another negate. Yeah, this time I know no more targets, so I can't get anything off of it, which is fine. But then you yeah. just pay one energy. Discard two. Yep. And that restands that card, gives it a plus 30k, so that's 60k it's, it's triple 60K strike. 60k right off the bat, that, yeah. yeah. There's nothing I can yep. do at this point. Um, I think I get a little goofy in a second, and I sacrifice all four of my energy to play a card. But in the long run, you got it. Like, I can't combo out of a 60k. It was really right. rough not... Not seeing um, any of my resources, really, at all. Yeah, and this just kind of shows it. Like I tried holding on as much as long as possible, but in the end, uh, Majibu destroyed Reverend Army and the villainous deck. I might be saying thank you for tuning in. Keep mind, links up in the descriptions, buttons down below. Feel free to click there for reason. But thank you for tuning in, and like always, have a good one.